On this episode of our Track FRS build, we do some sticker tuning. And we put in some street Lego harnesses. Plus we've got this cool little black box that we're gonna show you. Wow. So here's our finalized livery for our Scion FRS track build. Me and Dave spent a bunch of hours applying this stuff. Since we're amateurs, we're not that great at it, but we think it turned out pretty good. So you guys tell us what you think in the comments. Step one in our Takata harness install is to actually remove our Race 6 Hans harness that we ran at Targa last year. These, these are awesome harnesses. There's no reason to take them out other than the fact that they're not street legal. And for Ontario 1500, the rules specify we must have street legal belts in the car. So out they come. All right. Just need to get the crotch strap, the rudest sounding strap. We need to get that out of there which is made easier by the fact that Ricardo makes the seat cushions removable. Look at that! Some genius in Germany came up with that. Oh. Well, maybe they're not that smart because my hand's too big to fit through the hole. Can't go under the seat. Probably end it from the behind side, huh? That's the side, isn't it? The behind side. Oh, I can just kind of barely reach it. The nice thing is when you're here, I can just cop out and say, I can't do it, Pete. <laughs> so this is like another one of PT's famous creeper videos. Here. Oh yeah. Always oh, in a man. compromised position. <laughs> What's going Sticking on my here? fingers where they don't belong, Look you know? This guy, always doing something dirty to this poor FRS. Ah, it hurts. Those yoga classes are paying off, oh, huh? Yeah. What's that position called? The downward under seat dog. Crack strap monkey. Look, I have it. I just can't I know, push to get it, it through the actual eye bolt. Yeah, exactly. It's tricky. Come on. I'm just gonna sit here until you get it done because oh. the, the fans need to know, Pete, if you if succeeded or not. If I can do this or not. At this point, it's just a matter of just a matter of figuring patience. Kenny Which did. I have none of. <laughs> exactly. Feel you. While Pete does that, check out the Hans Ray 6 harnesses, everyone. They're very green and they work very well. Update from Peter? <laughs> Nothing going on here. All right. With the power of my skinny hands and fingers and all that wonderfulness, and the help of yoga, of course. Yes, yoga, yes, is, yoga is, this is what I've been practicing yoga for all my life, to get harnesses out of a vehicle. I win, I do win this time. I'm pretty sure you do yoga because of the girls in yoga pants, but. No, no, never. It's for the. Never, 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 come on, it's the harness. Look at this, I'm done. My job here is done, I'm going home. Going to yoga. <laughs> time to install our Drift 2 Takata harnesses. And the reason these are street legal are really, there's two, two features that make them street legal. One is this red push button belt release. That's a DOT feature that's required, I guess, because if uh, EMS needs to get you out of the car quickly, they don't want to have to look for some fancy race latch system. They just want the red button to pop that and out you come. The other feature that makes them street legal is the ASM shoulder strap. ASM stands for anti-submarine. And what happens is, is in an impact, this joint here basically comes apart and loosens this one shoulder belt and it allows your upper body to rotate. For whatever reason, with a three-point system, that's the body motion they want as well. So for whatever reason, for street legality, you're required to have that as well. So yeah, these, these belts are totally street legal, and if the man pulls us over and says otherwise, we will have the documentation, or at least the logic in our mind, to prove them wrong. We'll use the Jedi mind trick on them. Since we have a roll cage in the car, we could, of course, wrap the shoulder straps around the harness bar on the, on the cage, but because these are a snap-in style belt and they're really designed to be uh, installed and removed from the car really quickly and easily, we're going to show you how to do it with these eye bolts. This one will literally just thread into the rear lap belt hole. We have another one on the other side in already. So you literally just screw this eye bolt which is supplied with the, the, the belts into that threaded hole where the lap belt will go. Snap this on there, adjust the length to your size and you're good to go. 
So typically you would use a snap-in style belt like this in a streetcar so that you can use the back seat and then snap the belts in when you're at the racetrack and take them back out again when you're bringing home the kids from daycare. Because we have a roll cage in the car, it's obviously a little harder this way, but here I am going into this threaded hole where the lap belt would normally be. Just crank this guy down good and tight. And that gives us a very strong anchor point. I mean, it's designed for a factory seat belt anchor point. So it's perfect for these snap in shoulder belts. They also give you good geometry, good belt angles. So we're all set. That guy's in there. We've already put one in on the other side. So we're good to snap our shoulder straps in. Tight. Yeah. And that, that friends, is, is how you tighten it. The yeah. wrench. Yeah. All right. So the final step is to adjust the length of all the shoulder and lap belts uh, to fit my generous proportions. Pete will be on the skinny side of those lengths and I'll be on the fat side. So I can already tell that I can't even get my shoulder under this shoulder strap. So we're gonna have to lengthen the shoulder strap quite a bit. The lap belt length seems pretty good because the buckle's about centered on my gut. <laughs> and the other side's maybe a little long. And the shoulder strap, I can just squeeze under but I can tell that it's, well, actually, the length of that, it's actually good. So I think the shoulder shaft on the left is pretty good. Just need to lengthen the left one and we might fall right into position. So we just lengthened that shoulder strap and uh, I'm pretty happy with the way the shoulder straps are falling now. You can see I've got them at about the same length on each one and the tension's about the same on each one. It's a little looser on the left, I guess, but it's pretty close. And we still have lots of strap here for tightening down which means it should work well for Pete too. So yeah, I think I just need to tighten the left lap belt a little and it'll be spot on for me. And we'll try Skinny Guy. All right, I'm gonna attempt a Dukes of Hazards entrance into the Cyan FRS here because I just feel like it. Oh, my back. <laughs> oh, that looked uncomfortable. Did you injure yourself? Oh, it's okay. You all right? The yoga body is uh, very good at adapting <laughs> to those types uh, of bends. Moving looked, on to more important things. That looked very painful. <laughs> <laughs> so we're a little loose here, but that's not a big deal. Thankfully, we've got enough adjustment on the belt side. And this is what I really love about the Takata harnesses is that they're easy to adjust. There's a lot of belts on the market that you sit here and you pull and you yank and you can't get them, but these guys have these awesome little, uh, what, what, these cogs almost here? Or I don't know what to call them, but look at that. Bam here. Yeah, they do adjust well, don't look they? Look at that. Oh, the material so is nice smooth. and soft too, right? Which helps them yeah. not bind up. Yeah, and it would be nice if I had this flipped the right way, but there you go, look at that. Yeah. All right, this seat is officially DP and PT ready. We have a really nice uh, love story that happened on the internet for you. Uh, our friend Joshua from Beastronics actually messaged us on our Facebook page and said, hey guys, I like what you're doing. I make this cool product for the FRS that I'd really like you to try out. So I went to his website, which is really cool by the way, and had a read about it. And I was like, man, we, we need this, it's so cool. It's called the PD Nanny 86. PD standing for pedal dance. And if you own FRS and you go to the track, you know what the pedal dance is. It's this really complicated procedure you have to do where you pump the brake a bunch of times, pull the e-brake a bunch, few more times, pump the brake again, pull the e-brake again. And what that does is it fully shuts off all the electronic nannies. So it shuts off stability control, tracking control, completely disables those. When you use the, the button that Scion has in the car, it doesn't fully disable those, so it can actually interfere with the car's performance at the track. So this box, designed by Beastronics is designed to, to do the pedal dance for you with the push of a button. This little black button right here plugs into the OBD2 port, so there's no fancy wiring required. And we have the ACC cable, which comes with a secondary OBD2 port, so we can still plug in other devices without having to disconnect or remove this from the car, which is really handy. And uh, Josh actually went one step further by doing a Speed Academy custom configuration on here, which he's gonna sell now as the Speed Academy configuration, which we think is pretty cool. And what that is, it's basically like a race car configuration. So as soon as we turn the car on, it goes into pedal dance mode. We don't have to wait for the car to warm up. We don't have to idle it. 
like you do normally with the pedal dance, we don't even have to push the button. So we turn the car on and boom, everything's turned off. Now if it's a rainy day, we want some uh, electronic nannies there, then we press this button once, it goes into manual mode, then we can select between pedal dance mode and regular mode that way. So pretty awesome that for a race car, you can literally just plug this in and all the electronics are shut off. No thinking, just get in the car and drive the way we like it. All right, that wraps up yet another episode. And next up, I guess we're gonna have to get an alignment done. Yep, a front splitter to hopefully even out that rear wing. Yeah, we had a big understeer problem as you guys would have saw in our previous episode. So with the alignment and the splitter, we're hoping to actually get some good testing done on suspension setup. Also got to make sure to test out the tires, get some data on that as well. Yeah, that's a biggie to get sorted out. And Ontario 5800 is coming up quick. Three weeks away, which is not long at all. Yeah, we're going to have to really get our hustle on, but we will get it done. So make sure to check out the Facebook page to keep up to date with all the builds. And as always, subscribe to our channel. Oh, and we'll have a Shopify page for you soon so you can buy some Speed Academy swag. Woo! We know, we know you love the swag, people.